Dr. Rollship loves his job. He works in a very clean, very white office. His front desk staff all look very similar. Thin white women with blonde hair, large breasts and pink lips. There are no plants or other living things. There are oblique paintings of women in different positions. There are ceiling lights which give off a pink glow. His tile floors are spotless. He has nothing on the front of his office except a small plaque with his name and title. Dr. Alan Allship III, plastic surgeon. Dr. Allship is not a bad man. He smiles when it is appropriate. He laughs when it's expected of him. He has a family. He has a dog. He is good for both of them. He doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, and doesn't use profane language. He's a small man, only five foot six, with graying hair circling his head and ears. His father was a surgeon, as was his grandfather. He shares their profession and their name. And one more thing. The all ships have always had a peculiar aspect to their practice. Dr. Allship, the current and only living Alan Allship, performs the typical procedures. Liposuction, facelifts, Botox, he can do those in his sleep. This is 99% of his clientele. His patients rave about his work. They even throw in a good word about his bedside manner, as hard as it is for him. But this is not why he loves his job. He loves his job because of the one percent. His father said it is a calling. It is needed to make people extraordinary, to make them perfect. His grandfather said they could not survive on fat housewives. They need purity to excel, to be the best, to exceed all expectation. The one percent are the special patients. Those who never even know they are patients until they're under the knife. Dr. Allship is working on a 1% in his operating theater. Number 1476. He is alone, except for his patient. He found her begging for change near the subway. She was truly disgusting. Her arms were covered in needle scars, and her hair was falling out in clumps. She had two fingernails missing. Her teeth looked like the crooked city skyline. She was sitting in her own piss, too high to even realize she was urinating. She was perfect. Today he is shaving her feet. Not the hair on her feet, of course. She was so scarred from shooting up between her toes that it's unlikely any hair could survive. No, Dr. Allship is shaving her skin down. He is making her a perfect size five. Dr. Allship likes odd numbers. Number 1476 can't move. She's not strapped to a table, but she's been injected with a paralytic. It's a nifty tool, because although she cannot move, she can still feel what's happening. The process is part of the transformation, as his father always said. She's actually propped up in a sitting position, eyes glued open. Dr. Allship likes his one percents to watch his magic happen. Number 1476 has been a good patient so far. She didn't scream too much when he brought her to the office. She probably thought he was going to pay her for sex. He, of course, would never touch a patient in that way. He has a strict ethical code. She can't scream now either, partially because of the paralytic, and partially because he has unhinged her bottom jaw. The chin was just too rotted to save. 
Her tongue hangs out the hole where her jaw used to be. It makes a terrible noise when it slaps against her cheeks, so Dr. Orship is wearing headphones. A calming Bach piece echoes through his ears as he uses his grinder to flay away the calloused flesh that was her foot. It's going well. The bones are coming apart easily enough. The blood is always an issue, but he has someone to clean up after he's finished. Her drool is becoming a bit of a problem, as it drenches everything under her. But Dr. Alship is very patient. He calmly wipes the spit from his work, tilting her head back a bit. Number 1476 is being very cooperative. The operating theater's phone begins to ring. This bothers Dr. Alship, who does not like to be interrupted. But he has nearly finished his work on her left foot. He clamps a vein to prevent her from bleeding out, and reaches for the phone. Yes? It is one of his front desk staff. She explains that there is a client demanding to be seen. Name? He asks quietly. Becky. Twenty minutes. He hangs up. Becky is a client. She had approached him months ago about a rather odd procedure. She wanted a vocal cord shaved so that she could sound younger. When asked how young she would like to sound, she responded, Nine. Dr. Allship, due to his respectability and professionalism, obliged her request and fulfilled the surgery. It was a success. But since then, she has been harassing him to perform more and more extreme procedures. First, she wanted her breasts removed to resemble the chest of a child. He obliged her. Then she wanted all of her body hair removed. He obliged her again. Each time she would enter his practice unannounced and demand to be seen immediately. But since she was such a loyal client, he allowed this behavior. Truthfully, he was also intrigued by her oddity. But at the moment, he is covered in the blood of number 1476. He is pleased with the shape of her new left foot, and bandages it carefully. He had planned to do both feet today, but the right could wait until tomorrow. We've done good work today. Dr. Alship tells number 1476. You must keep off the foot for a few weeks, which shouldn't be a problem. Don't touch the bandaging. I would prefer not to have you break your hand again, but if you insist on scratching, I will be forced to make you yet another one. He takes off his scrubs and washes his hands. He does not enjoy the messiness of surgery, but it is a necessary evil. He picks the phone back up, one of his front desk staff answers. Yes? She asks in a sweet, lilting tone. Number 1455, please come in and get number 1476 and place her back in the den. I'll also need number 995 to come clean up. Understood. Dr. Orship hangs the phone up softly. He doesn't look back as he steps out of the operation room. He closes the white door behind him.